Which one is the best restaurant around here? There's little, um... From fine dining bistros to meager holes in the wall, this country's full of great places to eat. So let's take a road trip and hop a flight to Hawaii and grab a bite at the 50 most iconic restaurants in every state. We are going on a road trip. Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. In 1907, the Bright Star Restaurant opened its doors to eager customers wanting a departure from the traditional continental fare. Today, Bright Star is the oldest operating restaurant in Alabama and caters to those with a specific Mediterranean taste. For over a hundred years, Bright Star has been churning out Greek-style fare ever since they opened their doors, and people have been coming from near and far to try Bright Star's spin on the famous cuisine. Next time you're down south, don't hesitate to stop in and see what all the fuss is about. Then let's go. Alaska. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard of baked Alaska. When picturing Alaska, most people imagine wild game and canned foods rather than fine dining. But there's a little-known restaurant in Anchorage that caters to distinguished tastes. The Crow's Nest has been around for decades and features some of the best food in the area. The Crow's Nest makes sure to pay homage to their home state by sourcing fresh ingredients from local suppliers. They manage to capture the essence of fine dining even from their remote location. Are you a wine drinker? The Crow's Nest has a list of over 10,000 local and imported wines that are sure to pair excellently with whatever you're ordering. Let me get your best yellow wine. Arizona. Hey, you're from Arizona, right? This this restaurant is right at home, located in the Desert Botanical Gardens in Phoenix, Arizona. Gertrude's may seem like an unassuming name for one of the best food spots in the state, but when you try this farm-to-table cuisine, you'll be wishing Gertrude was your grandmother. Spring is always the best time to visit, as the kitchen gets access to a myriad of local ingredients that are freshly grown and harvested. This means that you're getting ingredients chosen at their peak and speaks to the quality that Gertrude's pursues. They only take the best of the best. Arkansas. Depressed, catatonic, Arkansas. This next entry comes to us from Little Rock, Arkansas, where they serve up continental options and some influence from the old world as well. The Pantry is a rather plainly named restaurant, but nothing about their food is ordinary. Their culinary influences come from the Czech Republic and parts of Germany, so you'll find everything from sauces to schnitzel on the menu. They haven't forgotten what everyday Americans like to eat either, and you can find all the familiar staples like burgers and fries as well. Anyway, cheeseburger and fries, please. California. You and Pretty Boy gonna move out to Zephyr HQ, abandon us for that California life? The Golden State is no stranger to good food, and as a result, there are no shortages of places to eat. We've chosen to set our sights on a little spot called Atelier Crenn, which is the brainchild of celebrity chef Dominique Crenn. If you've seen the Netflix special Chef's Table, you'll gain a new appreciation for what it took to get this restaurant off the ground. And stopping in, you'll find some of the greatest fine dining and under a thousand square feet. Atelier Crenn is known for their fine dining innovation and constantly revolving menu, so the chances of eating the same thing twice are incredibly slim. When food is good, you just know, and the six-month waiting list at Atelier Crenn is the only testimonial needed. But I'm hungry now. Colorado. Colorado? You have some restaurants there, right? This next location is one of the most famous and historic entries on our list. The Fort in Morrison, Colorado, is known for catering to some some very famous guests, including former presidents and celebrities. They offer food at a middle-of-the-road price point and don't turn their nose up at a good hamburger if that's your jam. They're also one of the few restaurants in the nation famous for serving Rocky Mountain oysters. We'll let you figure that one out on your own if you don't already know what they are. We're on a mission from God. Connecticut. I've never been to Connecticut. Up in the Northeast, they take their seafood very seriously. So a name like Union League Cafe doesn't necessarily carry the connotation of great food. To be honest, the place sounds more like a greasy spoon, but that couldn't be further from the truth. ULD is one of the most famous restaurants in the New Haven area. In fact, in 2023, it was voted the best overall restaurant in the state. What other endorsements do you need? I'm already packed! Delaware. Delaware's got it all! When you think of Delaware, what dish initially comes to mind? Lobster? Oysters? Scallops? Well, you wouldn't be wrong, but there's an even more iconic dish that this next entry serves up by the ton. The Old Mill Crab House in Del Mar has been an institution for those looking to slap on a bib and go to town on giant crab legs. 
What looks like a seemingly innocuous storefront is actually home to some of the best seafood around, so don't let the facade fool you. The Old Mill Crab House is where Delaware natives go when they want crab done right. What? Crab caviar? Florida. Old people eat early? In Florida? Miami is a bustling hub of culture, commerce, and cuisine, so it should come as no surprise to find one of the most iconic restaurants on our list right in the heart of the city. Komodo is a relatively new restaurant to the scene, specializing in Asian fusion seafood and signature dishes like Peking duck, miso cod, with no shortage of sushi and sashimi. For the seafood lovers out there, you could do no better than Komodo. That is, if you have the funds to treat yourself. Waiter? I'm rich. Georgia. Uh, Kenneth, you're from Georgia, aren't you? Established in 1976, the Rookery makes our list because natives of Macon, Georgia declare that this little restaurant just makes darn good food. There's nothing frilly or fancy about the fare coming out of this kitchen. They cater to classic North American tastes with items like burgers, onion rings, and wings. A meal at the Rookery won't set you back an arm and a leg, and your stomach will thank you for the visit. So why not try out this Georgia institution if you're ever in the neighborhood? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Hawaii. I'm picturing Hawaiian Beach unlimited Mai Tais. The state of Hawaii is unique, feeling the influence of both North American and Pan-Pacific inspiration. This duo makes for some widely loved fusion dishes. This next restaurant's roots, however, are firmly planted in Japan. Marukame Udon specializes in its namesake recipe, udon noodles. These thick and chewy noodles are often made from buckwheat and submerged in fish stock or other broths. Marukame is widely recognized as one of the state's most prized establishments, and anyone that can do udon right deserves a place on the list. Please. I do deserve it. Idaho. Idaho raises sugar beets. Who said that the only good thing to come out of Idaho was potatoes? State and Lemp, a native Boise establishment, decided to try and change the conventional dining experience for the better. In doing so, they've created a communal-style restaurant where most diners eat at a long, meal-hall-style table. Don't let this description fool you, however. State and Lemp makes sure each guest's needs are catered to through customizable options that pair intricate, tasty menus with a family-style atmosphere. It's an interesting concept, and for that alone, this place deserves some recognition. We earned it. Illinois. Illinois, like the state? It would be a crime to mention the state of Illinois without tipping our hats to Pertillo's. It's one of the state's oldest and most recognizable fast food chains, and it still manages to remain relevant in the 21st century. Since they opened in 1963, they've been serving Italian beef, hot dogs, burgers, fries, and shakes like nobody's business. Business. Portillo's isn't just a restaurant, it's a little piece of Illinois history. We remember! Indiana. Indiana. Tuesday. I'll be there. There's no shortage of beef in the U.S., and as a result, some of the best steakhouses in the nation are found in unexpected places. While we wouldn't consider this next entry a dive, it certainly is a cherished steakhouse. St. Elmo's Steakhouse in Indianapolis has consistently put out a standard that critics and foodies alike cannot ignore. It's been voted the best steakhouse in the nation numerous times, and has been open for over a hundred years. If that isn't worthy of your attention, then nothing is. I'm all ears. Iowa. Iowa! What do we want? When you hear the word barbecue, most people are going to think North Carolina and Texas. But what if we told you there was a little joint in Iowa that shines just as bright? Jethro's Barbecue is located in Des Moines, and over their years in service have come to be known as an institution. They specialize in baby back ribs, sampler platters, and steak sandwiches. There's something for every barbecue lover to go crazy about at Jethro's. Barbecue sauce fight! Before we move on, if it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks! Now, more state-to-state -state restaurant hopping. Kansas. Next stop, Kansas City. At one point in time, the American diner was the backbone of this country. Sadly, many have closed down in the century since they were made popular, but there are some that still hold on. Somerset Cafe is one of these locations. Once you eat at this Dover, Kansas cafe slash diner, you'll be wishing for a Somerset to pop up in your small town. Their claim to fame? Well, pie, of course. Sit and enjoy a cup of coffee, some breakfast, and reminisce about all the good old days as you enjoy some delicious food. You want coffee or you want to reminisce? Kentucky. Kentucky Fried Chicken. 
in Kentucky. Kentucky's not always known for its great cuisine, but forget what you've heard up until this point because this next entry is working to put Kentucky on the foodie map. The Blue Raven is a farm-to-table restaurant located in Pikeville that serves classic American dining options with just that little bit extra. They've cultivated an air of sophistication and family-friendliness so everyone can try their excellent food. Not a fan of burgers? Well, they're fixing favorites from down south and Appalachia as well, so don't hesitate to stop by for a try. It's really yeah. good. It's really good. Louisiana. Louisiana fog cakes. Thanks. Louisiana is a veritable destination when it comes to cuisine, so it should come as no surprise to find our next restaurant nestled in the heart of the culinary mecca, New Orleans. Galatoire serves a reimagined vision of Cajun cuisine and elevates it to new heights. In recent years, the restaurant has gained so much popularity that people are paid to stand in line just to make sure diners can reserve a seat. If that's not a sign of a successful business, then we're not sure what is. To success. Maine. Your Maine lobster with crab and seafood stuffing. Oh. Leeward is making waves off the coast of Maine by bringing a new level of elegance to the New England dining space. It was recently awarded the recognition of being a James Beard semifinalist, and once you stop in, you'll see why it's garnered so much attention. They serve Italian staples and make sure that every dish is constructed with handmade pasta made in-house every single day. Preparation is the unsung hero of the culinary industry, and when restaurateurs put that kind of love into their food, it's a recipe for success. I love to cook. Maryland. Maryland blue crab. What was initially thought to be flash-in-the-pan success for Woodbury Kitchen has proven to be anything but. Woodbury decided a no-frills approach to classic cuisine like pizza, flatbreads, and other iconic fare would bring them the recognition that they deserved. Shortly after they opened their doors, this theory was proven fortuitous, as it's now one of the most popular dining destinations in the state. You're like a superstar now. Massachusetts. I bet they're from Massachusetts. If you don't mind waiting in line or calling months in advance for a reservation, then Bistro Le Gras in Northampton is probably your perfect spot. They serve fine dining dishes with a fixation on getting ingredients as local as possible. The food is inspired by classic French fine dining, and they've managed to nail the atmosphere that goes right along with it. This small bistro only makes things from scratch, and as a result, there's a line out the door on any given night. Then people would line up to eat at my restaurant! Michigan. You going back to Michigan for Thanksgiving? This location was voted as one of the best destinations for Valentine's Day. The Whitney is a picturesque mansion that used to be a lumber baron's manor and has now been transformed into one of the best fine dining locations in Detroit. The atmosphere of the Whitney is one of a kind, and once you take a look at it, you'll know why it's the perfect getaway for a romantic evening. Love is in the air! Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, and now I live here. Wendy's House of Soul may be far removed from the south of the nation, but that doesn't mean that Chef Wendy Puckett isn't pouring her own soul into the food. Wendy's serves all the famous staples from the south like fried chicken, greens, macaroni and cheese, and even non-traditional options like chicken and waffles. What's not to love? Chicken and waffles? What a weird combination. Mississippi. We crossed over the Mississippi River yet? The Mississippi River was the river we crossed in Mississippi. Don't be fooled by the name. Bozo's Seafood Market is probably where most locals would tell you to go for real Mississippi fare. For over 60 years, they've been serving Southern classics like crawdads, shrimp, and po'boys. They've been featured in numerous publications, which means that the secret is out and you'll be elbow to elbow with other patrons looking to claim their slice of Mississippi. Two slices, please. Missouri. Missouri. Misery. Have you ever wanted a show to go with your meal? Well, if you're in St. Louis, then Blue City Deli is your go-to destination. Not only do they serve all the famous sandwiches of the region like po' boys and mufalettas, but they also host music acts on any given day. Blue City Deli promises that you'll be tapping your foot to the beat while you enjoy their delicious sandwiches. The sandwiches. The holy sandwiches. Montana. Welcome to Montana. Black Iron Grill and Rotisserie may seem like another regional chain from the outside, but inside, they're serving up some of the state's best steaks, burgers, and seafood. The presentation of their food is impeccable, with an attention to detail that you would expect from a Michelin star restaurant, but with a price point that won't break the bank. 
Stop in next time you're out west. See what this grill has to offer. Well, it's, uh, it's everything you ever wanted. Nebraska. Well, are we in Nebraska? We've seen a lot of North American influence so far, but would it surprise you to know that one of the best restaurants Nebraska has to offer is actually a Chinese restaurant? Dragon Walk has been voted the best Chinese restaurant Nebraska has to offer in more than one poll with food described as consistently exceptional. If you find yourself in Omaha, stop in at the Dragon Walk. Just look for their fire-breathing mascot. Dragon! Nevada. Man, Nevada's a mess. In Las Vegas, everything is about the hype and drenched in neon promises, so it shouldn't surprise you that this next restaurant can be found nearly 900 feet in the air at the top of the stratosphere. Top of the world is exactly what it sounds like, a dining experience that overlooks the entire city and serves some of the best fine dining cuisine in the city. It's been voted the best Nevada has to offer multiple times, and one look at the view will tell you why. He said I'd know why when I need to know why. Now I know why. New Hampshire. Feel that New Hampshire air. Parker's Maple Barn may sound like a family-owned farm, but it's actually one of the most celebrated and historic sugar houses in New Hampshire. They specialize in breakfast items centered around their own maple syrup. Since the 60s, Parker's has been stacking pancakes high and pouring the syrup on thick. So if your breakfast tastes lean more towards the sweet, then Parker's is the perfect getaway. My famous chocolate chip caramel whipped cream pancakes. New Jersey. New Jersey. Welcome. Don't let the names throw you off. Rats Restaurant in Hamilton has constructed a dining experience that feels like eating in the French countryside. It's a high-end establishment that caters to those with discerning palates, so the experience is not for everyone. But the one-of-a-kind ambiance and delicious delicacies made it a restaurant we simply couldn't overlook. We need to go in there. New Mexico. The New Mexico specimen gave us hope. This New Mexico institution has been around for almost a century, and they show no signs of slowing down. The pantry is located in Santa Fe and has been serving Tex-Mex fare like breakfast burritos and the like to hungry customers all over the state. Their claim to fame is a breakfast potato that has been cooked to crunchy perfection and keeps people coming back time and again. Crunchy and delicious. New York. Pack your things. We're heading for New York. If you've been in business for over a hundred years, then clearly you've developed a recipe for success. Such is the case with the Grand Central Oyster Bar, which has been occupying the underground since 1913. They specialize in oysters, of course, and it's not uncommon to see weary travelers slurping down dozens at a time in one sitting. Oyster? Yeah. North Carolina. North Carolina? It's like the second worst of the Carolinas. With perhaps the largest consensus of any restaurant on our list, Mateo in North Carolina. Carolina is lauded as being one of the greatest locations to relax and enjoy simple, delicious food. Bloggers and critics alike agree that Mateo's atmosphere and food deserve recognition. Southern inspiration with Mexican flair is what you can expect when you pull up a chair at Mateo, and that sort of fusion has drawn hungry customers from all over the country. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? North Dakota. Wait, you went to North Dakota? If you've ever been to the Dakotas, you know that a lot of the people that live there are descended from Germanic and Polish ancestors. This means that the cuisine enjoyed in those countries have made their way to North America. To cater to those needs, Worst Beer Hall has been specializing in beer, bratwurst, and all the fixings that go with them for decades. We're getting pretty good at it. Ohio. Ohio? That's nice. The Golden Lamb is maybe the oldest establishment on our list and goes all the way back to 1803, when it first opened its doors as a hotel for those staying in Lebanon, Ohio. During its operation, several presidents have stayed at the Lamb, as well as other famous individuals like Harriet Beecher Stowe. Nowadays, the Golden Lamb most caters to diners, to which they serve a fine dining experience that's one of a kind. That was like, that was unique. Oklahoma. Oklahoma? Wow. How long was I asleep? One of Oklahoma's primary exports is cattle, so it should come as no surprise that we're adding a steakhouse to represent the state. Cattleman's Steakhouse has been crowned one of the best steakhouses in the nation time and time again. You'll not only be convinced by the steaks they serve, but by the history that seems to ooze out of the walls. That's great steak. Oregon. There's this spot in Oregon. In today's day and age, we have to give some credit to new and innovative dining experiences like the food truck. Bow Picker is one such 
Dutch food truck that calls Astoria, Oregon home and fries up fish and chips to golden perfection. Even if you've never tried Bow Picker, you would easily recognize their truck because it's one of the only boats you'll ever see driving on the road. Clever marketing, no? That is so clever. Pennsylvania. Rural Pennsylvania. This next one is less of a restaurant and more of a tavern. In fact, it's the oldest continuously operated tavern in the nation. For over 150 years, McGillan's Old Ale House in Philadelphia has left the light on for weary travelers seeking a beverage. Along with the beer that flows on tap, you can expect great bar fare as well. Just about every fried morsel is at your fingertips at McGillan's. There are plenty of worse places to end a night. You're the best, I'm the worst. Rhode Island. Is this 6765 Elmwood Avenue, Cranston, Rhode Island? It's easy to appreciate how fresh seafood can be when you're sitting on the banks of the ocean. Coast Guard House in Rhode Island makes the cut by serving up the freshest fish that money can buy. Don't believe us? Just look out into the rolling waves and tell us those oysters aren't fresh. The Ocean State is known for its fresh fish, but this unique restaurant located in Narragansett is one of the top destinations for seafood lovers in the state. Seafood au gratin. Seafood gumbo. South Carolina. South Carolina is going to be tough. Charleston, South Carolina is home to some of the most popular food destinations on the East Coast. There are too many to mention, but after all is said and done, Husk takes the spot on this list. Husk has been serving food from a picturesque, restored Victorian-era home that looks like it's been standing since the country's inception. The best the South has to offer comes from Husk's Kitchen, and there's no better location for Cajun fine dining. Cajun style. South Dakota. South Dakota. It's great. This state isn't just a replica of its northern sibling, it has a food identity all of its own. The pheasant in Brookings knows that people in South Dakota are connoisseurs of dairy and beef, two things in abundance. As a result, they decided to open a restaurant that caters to both of these desires. Not only can you sit down and have a sophisticated burger at a reasonable price, but there's also an ice cream store under the same roof. It's a one-stop shop for dinner and dessert. Sounds like fun for the whole family. Tennessee. Who's winning? Tennessee. Nashville and the greater state of Tennessee love their chicken, so much so that they've invented one of the most iconic dishes known in the culinary world, Nashville hot chicken. Although you'd expect the best Nashville hot to come out of the city itself, for our money, it's Hattie B's who's gained statewide notoriety. Don't hold the fact that they're a chain against them. This institution plays close attention to quality, meaning that the chicken is going to be excellent no matter what part of the state you're in. It's best for fried chicken. Texas. Texas. Texas, that's so exotic. The state of Texas has done so much to contribute to the culinary space of North America that it was hard to narrow things down to just one restaurant. If there is one that embodies all aspects of Texan cooking, it's Contigo. This little outdoor restaurant has made a name for itself, not only in the nightlife scene, but the culinary one as well. Serving everything from expensive cocktails to ox tongue sliders, this little gem is ready to be discovered by even more people. Welcome everybody! Utah. You go to Utah, you stay in Utah. There are many ski resorts in the state of Utah, but only one is home to the summit. The Snowbird Resort sits atop Hidden Peak and serves some of the best foods available on the slopes. Feeling thirsty after the day's runs? Not to worry, the summit also stocks a healthy selection of local and national beers and microbrews. Would you like a beer? Well, okay. Vermont. I think it was Vermont. There's more to Vermont than just maple syrup. The Black Sheep Bistro in Virgins is quick to dash the rumors that Vermont's only contribution to the culinary arts is the sugary concoction. It's been named the most outstanding restaurant in the region multiple times and remains a getaway destination for those looking at a fancier dining experience. There are few better in Vermont when it comes to a great meal. Whatever is still good. Virginia. Yes. Richmond, Virginia. Being next to the Atlantic Ocean affords Virginia some of the best seafood around, and one establishment, Public Fish and Oyster, takes this responsibility very seriously and serves up only the freshest oysters and seafood. From bacon-wrapped oysters that will make you break out in tears to some of the creamiest chowder on the East Coast, there's no better stop than Public Fish and Oyster. You guys ready to order? White wine and oysters. Washington. Washington, D.C. 
that's where the money is. From the mind of top chef Nick Coffey comes the idea of sustainable and delicious food that leaps off the plate. Ursa Minor is a restaurant located on Lopez Island that has to be seen to be believed. Picturesque dishes float out of the kitchen every night to a sold-out house, which means that something must be going right under their roof. If you're looking for Bay Area fine dining, there's no better destination. Sco, sco, sco! Skip there! West Virginia. You could come with us. I'm not going to West Virginia. Coleman's Fish Market has been in business since 1914 and remains the best place to dive into fried fish. Several vocal patrons have proclaimed that it's the best place in the world to get a fried fish sandwich. And we do not take that lightly. We need all of you to investigate immediately. I'll go right now. Wisconsin. What's up, Wisconsin? In downtown Madison, right off of the Courthouse Square, there sits a little-known supper club turned bar that has locals of the city clamoring for more. The Old Fashioned is a retro experience that shows what it's like when the turn of the century meets, well, Old Fashioned. There's no shortage of cocktails and bar food to be found at this spot, because what pairs better with an icy cold beer than good old Wisconsin cheese curds? Nothing. Really? Wyoming. We should talk about Wyoming. One of the prettiest locales on our list has to be the Irma Hotel in Cody. Elk antler chandeliers hang from the ceiling, and you get the feeling that you're on some great safari when looking at your surroundings. Don't be fooled by the decor, as the Irma Hotel caters to many hungry patrons on a daily basis, and there's a reason that they keep coming back for more. Steaks, chops, and all sorts of homestead options are in play for when you'd like to treat the family to an out of the ordinary Sunday dinner. Steak and eggs for you, steak and eggs for you. We've got more great videos that are right up your alley, so go ahead and tap or click on one more.